What's going on everyone? My name is Twig and today we are reviewing a brand new survivor like to hit Steam titled Cozy Space Survivors, as you can probably tell from the title of the video. There are a ton of new games coming out in the next few weeks and I came across this one uh, just randomly after watching the trailer and checking out the Steam page. I knew I had to give it a shot, especially since I hadn't played one of these titles in quite a while. I know we have the uh, Vampire Survivors DLC that just dropped a day or two ago and I still need to do some catching up on Halls of Torment before the official release, but this title felt a little different than most games in the genre, um, so let's just hop right in and talk about it. The dev posted that he got inspiration from a few different games when making this one, and it definitely shows through some of the game mechanics. As I was playing it, this game feels different and in a good way. You play as a ship traveling through space, completing quests, all while trying to survive from enemies by upgrading your weapon and stats each run. This title is rather short with it only requiring about 2-4 to four hours to complete, and that's the way that it was designed. One map, 4 total unlockable ships, and a set of 7 permanent upgrades. You start each run off by taking off from Margit's house, where then you have free reign to fly anywhere on the map. A 10 minute timer starts and it's up to you to survive, which is how you unlock the next ship. Like I said before, there are 4 ships in total and you unlock the next available ship by surviving with the previous one. The first one you unlock is an all around basic, easy to use ship. It reminded me of like the Prometheus ship from the movie, while the next one you get reminded me of like the Millennium Falcon, which ended up being my personal favorite in the game. It can equip a lot of weapons to it and it has a ton of health, but in return, it is super slow unless you choose the speed ability when you level up. The next ship is a small weaponless speed ship. The only way to kill things with it are to either ram them or burn them with their jets. And then lastly, you have the ship they call Wormy, which is exactly what you would think it would be. If you played the game Snake, imagine that. You have to stay healthy to keep your weapons, which can make for unique runs. Gather XP Golden Hearts to level your ship up and get the option to pick upgrades like weapon damage, speed, or weapon range. You can find three different types of boxes across space that give XP, health, or the ability to add a weapon to your ship. When you come across chocolate asteroids, you can mine them for chocolate chunks to spend after you finish a run in the chocolate store back at the main menu on permanent upgrades. Getting these really makes uh, future runs easier as it applies to all of your ships. Questing in this game is super unique. There are a set number of quests, 10 I think in total, that you can uh, complete with each ship. They are super simple, either retrieving something or destroying debris or eliminating an enemy. The circle hub surrounding your ship will lead you to quests or objectives, which is pretty neat as well. Everything is pretty simple and straightforward. You have the ability to grab jump from one side of the map to the other simply by going off the edge and there is a final boss you can defeat for a huge sum of chocolate for you to spend. Achievements are super straightforward, broken down into destroying enemies with all the different weapons and all the different ways to kill them, picking up a number of boxes around the map of each type, grab jumping so many times, surviving with each type of ship, beating the boss, completing each quest for the first time, and buying all the chocolate upgrades. I play a lot of survivor-like games on my Steam Deck, so I for sure had to give this one a try. The game is not currently verified on Steam Deck, but from my time of doing a few runs on it, it played really well. Menu size and text was proportional, and everything looked and ran good. Being at $3 full price, currently down to $2, you can't really beat the price if you enjoy these types of games. By no means are you going to spend hours upon hours in this game, but it was a good time to chill and beat a game quick. It worked like it was supposed to, and I would definitely pick up DLC in the future if any is added. That's pretty much all I have. This may be a shorter video, but I want to keep these reviews coming out. As always, my Steam profile is linked down below. Feel free to add me on there. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff, and be on the lookout for more video game reviews coming soon. Peace.